Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to be learning about some gas stoichiometry and before we start learning about some gas stoichiometry, here's a little disclaimer. It says that prior knowledge of the following topics is essential before watching this video. So I recommend that you first watch the video on mass mass stoichiometry, molar volume of a gas at STP, and the ideal gas law before watching this video on gas stoichiometry. So what is gas stoichiometry? Well, it says right here that gas stoichiometry is the mathematical process used to determine the volume of an unknown gas in a chemical reaction based on the volume of a known gas in the same chemical reaction. And when we perform gas stoichiometry, the chemical reaction always needs to be balanced first to allow you to set up the correct mole ratios between the unknown and known substances. Okay, so essentially, what we're doing in gas stoichiometry is we have some sort of chemical reaction that involves uh, a gas or multiple gases, and what we're trying to do is typically determine the volume we're trying to determine the volume of an unknown gas based on the uh, the volume of a known gas using this little this little uh, diagram right here that helps us to to convert volume of known substance to volume of unknown substance. So if we have this little diagram in front of us while we're performing some gas stoichiometry, uh, it should become second nature and once you start to get the hang of it you won't even need this little diagram anymore so let's go ahead and apply this little diagram to a few gas stoichiometry problems and hopefully you get the hang of it in this first example it says in the reaction below if 83.2 liters of ethane are burned at STP how many grams of water will be produced? So in this problem right here, if we take a look, we are asked to figure out how many grams of water will be produced. So we want to figure out how many grams of H2O will be produced if we have 83.2 liters of ethane. So if we have 83.2 liters of this stuff right here, then how many grams of water will be produced in this chemical reaction. So if we take a look right here, we see that the known quantity is expressed in liters, right? So the known quantity is expressed in liters and the unknown quantity is our water and we are trying to figure out the mass in grams of this water right here. So we have our chemical equation, it's right here and it's already been balanced for us. So these coefficients will allow us to set up our mole ratio in this step right here. So let's go ahead and start this problem. An important part of this problem is that this is happening at STP. And whenever we see STP, what this is telling us is that the temperature is 273K and that the pressure is one atmosphere. So whenever we see STP or standard temperature and pressure, it's telling us a set of conditions for temperature and pressure. And we know that at STP, a gas is gonna occupy 24 liters of space. So we know that at STP, one mole of a gas is going to equal 22.4 liters, or is going to take up 22.4 liters. So if we take a look at this problem here, we have 83, we're starting off with 83.2 liters of ethane, which is C2H6. And what we are trying to figure out here is we want to know how many grams of water will be produced? So if we take a look, our known substance is in volume or in liters, and so we have to convert this to moles first. So if we take a look at this relationship right here, we know that one mole of C2H6 gas occupies 22.4 liters of space at STP. Because this is occurring at STP, then we can put 22.4 here. If this was not occurring at STP, then we couldn't set this problem up like this. And so now that is gonna bring us to this step right here. So we've gone from volume to moles. And so now we need to figure out how many moles of unknown substance there are. So what we need to do is come up with our mole ratio. And our mole ratio, we have to take a look at our balanced chemical equation. And we're comparing two things, the unknown stuff, which is this right here, to our known stuff, which is this right here. And if we take a look, our unknown quantity is telling us 
that's six moles of H2O, that there are six moles of H2O for every two moles of C2H6, every two moles of C2H6. And we're going to put moles of C2H6 on the bottom of our little equivalency statement here, so that way we can cancel these units out later on. So we don't want to figure out moles. Now we're here, so now we've gone from moles to moles. The question, though, is asking for how many grams of water. So the unknown substance we're trying to figure out in grams. So if we're trying to go from moles to grams, if you take a look right here, we need to multiply by the molar mass. We're going to multiply by the molar mass of water. And so what is the molar mass of water? Well, if we take a look and break it down, water consists of hydrogen and oxygen. If we take a look at water H2O, there are two hydrogens. There is one oxygen. The molar mass of one hydrogen from our periodic table is 1.01, giving us 2.02. .02. The molar mass of oxygen from our periodic table is 16. And so if we end up adding these together, our molar mass of water is 18.02 grams per mole. So every one mole of water is going to have a mass of 18.02 grams. And so now that we've set this up, we can just put this in our calculator. We take 83.2 divided by 22.4, since 22.4 is on the bottom here. We then multiply by 6, and then divide by 2, and then multiply by 18.02, and we end up with 200.8 approximately. 200.8 what? Well, let's take a look. We have liters canceling out with liters, moles canceling out with moles, moles of water canceling out with moles of water, leaving us with grams of H2O. So in this problem right here, if we have 83.2 liters of ethane at STP, this is going to end up producing 200.8 grams of water. Let's take a look at another problem. In this second example, it says how many liters of nitrogen gas are required to produce 53.9 liters of ammonia at STP. So if we take a look at this problem, we're asked to figure out how many liters we want to know how many liters of this stuff will end up uh, we will end up needing if 53.9 liters of ammonia are produced. So ammonia is NH3, and it looks like 53.9 liters of this stuff here is produced. And this is all happening at STP, so that's an important concept to understand because we know one mole of gas is going to occupy 22.4 liters at STP. So if we take a look at this problem, let's go ahead and set this up. The, uh, the known substance is in liters. The known substance is in liters. Our unknown substance is also going to be in liters. Or we need to figure it out in liters. So if you take a look, what we need to do is convert the liters of known substance to moles. We then need to multiply by our mole ratio from our balanced chemical equation. And then we need to convert the moles of unknown substance to volume or liters. So let's go ahead and do this. It take, if we take a look, we have 53.9. 53.9 liters of NH3. And so the very first thing that we need to do here is we need to convert the liters I'm sorry, the liters to moles. So we know that one mole of NH3 gas is going to occupy 22.4 liters at STP. So this step right here is taking us to moles. But we don't want moles. We want to figure out how many moles, we don't want moles of known substance, we need to figure out moles of unknown substance. So what we now need to do is take a look at our balanced chemical equation. If we take a look at our balanced chemical equation, we're comparing the unknown stuff to our known stuff. And if we take a look, this is telling us that for every two, uh, every two moles of nitrogen gas needed, it's going to end up producing two moles of NH3. So our mole ratio here is going to be two moles of N2, and we're going to put two moles of N2 on top. So that way our two moles of NH3 
will end up being canceled later. These two units will now be able to cancel since this is on top and this is on bottom. So now we're at this step, but we want to figure out the volume. We were asked to figure out the volume of unknown. So if you take a look right here, we know that for every one mole of N2 at STP, it's going to occupy 22.4 liters. So that's how we're going to set that up. And so now if we take a look, we just put this in our calculator, 53.9 divided by 22.4 times 2 divided by 2 times 22.4. And we're going to end up with a total of 53.9, 53.9 what? Well, let's take a look. Liters of NH3 cancels, moles of NH3 cancels, moles of N2 cancels, leaving us with liters of nitrogen gas. So in this reaction right here, if, if 53.9 liters uh, of ammonia are produced, it's because we have 53.9 li I'm sorry, it's because, yeah, it's because we have 53.9 liters of nitrogen reacting. Let's take a look at another problem. In this third example, it says propane reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water according to the following reaction equation. So here's our chemical equation. It tells us that if we have 3.89 liters of propane, and this is going to react at 16.95 degrees Celsius and 103.9 kilopascals, then how many grams of water will be produced? So in this problem here, we're trying to figure out how many grams of this stuff will be produced if we have 3.89 liters of propane reacting at this temperature and at this pressure. So this isn't taking place at STP. We have a new set of conditions, right? The temperature is right here and the pressure is right here. And so we need to figure out how many grams of water will be produced from 3.89 liters of this stuff here reacting with an excess of oxygen at this temperature and at this pressure. So what we first need to do is we need to figure out, we need to figure out how many moles, we want to figure out how many moles of this stuff there are. So how many moles of this stuff there are? Well, we have to use the ideal gas law because this is not taking place at STP, we will have to use the ideal gas law, PV equals N times R times T. And whenever we're working with the ideal gas law, keep in mind that the volume always needs to be in liters, the temperature always needs to be in Kelvin, and the pressure always needs to be in atmospheres. So let's go ahead and set this up. We, need, we, uh, we have pressure, we have volume, we have uh, temperature, and R is the universal gas law constant. So if we take a look here, our pressure is 103.9 kilopascals. Our volume, if we take a look, is in liters, 3.89 liters. Our temperature is 16.95 degrees Celsius. And R is always the same, 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres over moles Kelvin. So what we have to do is we have to first convert the pressure to atmospheres. So how do we convert this to atmosphere as well? From an earlier video, we learned that one atmosphere is 101.3 kPa. So we'll put this in our calculator and we take 103.9 divided by 101.3 and we end up with 1.0257, 1.0257 atmospheres. Our volume is in unit or is in liters. However, our temperature is in degrees Celsius, so we need to convert this to Kelvin by adding 273. So we'll take 273 plus 16.95, and we end up with 289.95. We'll just call this 290. Okay. All right, so now that we have our pressure in atmospheres, our volume in liters, our temperature in K, and our R, we can plug this into the PV equals NRT formula. 
and this time we're solving for n. We want to know what n is. We're trying to figure out the number of moles here. So we're going to divide both sides by RT. RT will cancel. And so it looks like the formula that we're going to use to figure out how many moles we have is going to equal PV over R times T. So our pressure, if we take a look, is 1.0257. times our volume, which is 3.89 liters. And we're going to end up dividing this by R, which is 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres over moles Kelvin, times our temperature, which is 290K. And when we put this in our calculator, we'll take 1.0257 times 3.89 divided by parentheses 0 0.0821 times 290. We'll close those parentheses and we end up with 0 0.1676 moles of C3H8. So this is not our final answer. This is just the number of moles we have of this stuff right here, of our, our known substance. So what we now have to do is run it through the stoichiometry process to figure out how many grams of our unknown substance will be produced. So let's go ahead and set that up. We'll do that right up here. We have 0 0.1676 moles of C3H8. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out how many grams of this stuff will be produced. How many grams of water will be produced? How many grams of this stuff will be produced? So if we take a look at our mole ratio, we can see that there are four moles of water for every one mole of C3H8 from our balanced chemical equation. So now... We're here at moles of unknown substance, but we want to figure out the mass of the unknown substance. So our last step is going to be to multiply by the molar mass of water. And in example one, we said that the molar mass of water was 18.02 grams per mole. If we look on our periodic table, we have two hydrogens and one oxygen that adds up to 18.02. And I'm going to put our final answer down here. So we take 0 0.1676 times 4 times 18.02. And we're going to end up with 12.1. 12.1 what? If we take a look, moles of C3H8 cancels, moles of water cancels, leaving us with grams of H2O. So that is gas stoichiometry in a nutshell, and I hope you guys found this helpful.